I know I need to size up a few And when I defang the viper Trust me, ain't gonna come from nowhere Jeff, I already put you out I don't even know why you're out here right now Keep on talking Hey, hey, do me a favor Why don't you act like this is an AA meeting And you shut your mouth while I'm sharing with the crew And Mustafa, you out here A boy of one man And I'm gonna tell you what you got lucky at the Rumble, so I know you're gonna come out here and run your mouth about how bad you are. But let me give you a little bit of a reality check. You see, Mustafa, you said that my eyes don't lie. Well, your eyes don't lie either, because last week, they were closed real tight when I put your simple ass to sleep. And AJ, hey man, be honest with me. How's our old girl Wendy doing? Welcome back to the Park Street Wrestling Podcast. It's me, Hafiz, and with me as always is Devin, and we yeah. are about to talk about AEW Forbidden Door, yes. AEW versus New Japan World Collide. The door is busted wide open in we Chicago, Shot Town, <laughs> yes, United here in the Center Windy on City. the West Side. <laughs> yes, and it's it's great because we. We're in great spirits right now because yes. pre-show we were talking a little bit about you know <laughs> AEW and did it get us to that point where we're saying yeah we're gonna shell out fifty dollars <laughs> for this pay per view <laughs> and it was a spirited conversation. Yes, um, it was. I mean, look, fifty dollars like we're we're both hardworking men, you know, yeah. like we work hard for our money, our and for for me to pay you know, premium dollar for a, a, a show, you know, I want them to really grab me. And I, I don't even want it to be a question. I want to be saying, yep. take my money. No question. Take my money. I don't yes. want to be thinking like, oh, like, <laughs> so I'm paying for oh, all these subscriptions. Or I got Netflix. I got Hulu. I got Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Like all this stuff going on, right? And now you want me to go and do $50 on this? Like, oh. So... It didn't get us there. I mean, I'm going to say this, that there are certain matches yes. where I'm excited. You know, I agree. I agree Especially, with that. Especially, I think my main event, honestly, is going to be this Fatal 4-Way mm. for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Mm. I didn't like the way they just kind of said, like, hey, this is the match. But I was kind of, I was seeing the writing on the wall for this match to happen. Yeah. Ever since Okada lost. It seemed like, okay, oh, my God. Yeah, Jay White's champion, Adam Cole, Jay White, like, let's do that. And then you still got Adam Hangman Page, and Okada's not going to be left out of this. Just fatal four-way. <laughs> let's do this shit. Let's just do it. And, you know, had this been, I don't know, it, I hate to bring up WWE in this, but we're going to do it. In WWE, yes. you got the general manager. Mm -hmm. You know, when when all this is going on, hang, um, you got uh, Jay White figure. Singer. If you will. Yeah, in fact, exactly. <laughs> the authority figure. You know, you got Jay White telling Adam Cole, you ain't getting the shot. You got Jay White <laughs> telling Adam and Page, you ain't getting the mm -hmm. shot. Ain't nobody getting the shot. I'm the catalyst. I made First all this all, happen. You lost to this dude two times. <laughs> you lost to him. Make it make sense White. to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, the other thing is, the record against Adam Hangman Page, he's got a winning record against him too. I think he said mm -hmm. like two nothing, like he's yep. over him as well. Yep. So Jay White makes a great point as to why neither one of these dudes really Makes deserve sense. a shot against him. Because first of all, Hangman Page, I'm up uh, two two wins on you already, and Adam Cole, sorry bro, but you lost to this dude that I whooped, <laughs> and you lost to him twice. So <laughs> it makes sense. I get it. And then, you know, all this is going on, and then Okada shows up. Yeah. You know, and it's awesome. The crowd pops, you know, and it's just a great moment. And then the dust settles. And at this point, you know, unfortunately for all the AEW fans, at this point, this is where a GM or someone with, you know, where an authority figure would come out and say, all right, enough, <laughs> enough of this. <laughs> it's time to give the people what they want. <laughs> Fatal four way match, and then have the crowd go nuts when it's made official. Have yes. all the wrestlers do the stare down. Have Jay yes. White raise the title, and there, there we say, go. Hey, none of y'all taking this from me. Mm, <laughs> That's right. This shit. 
<laughs> but of course, you know, Tony, you know, he doesn't typically do that. You know, he usually will make a big announcement on, on social media saying, hey, I'm going to make an announcement. It'll be For the known he's coming out <laughs> and then he'll make the announcement because, you know, Tony, <laughs> that's just his way. Yeah. Um, but this was one where Tony just needed to say, you know what? I got, let me go out there, man. And, and that would have been a perfect opportunity for him to get all the love and adoration from the crowd and for him to say, yes, I'm going to give you people what you want. I know what you want. To I give listen that stamp to my fans. of approval to say, this is the match, the yeah, match you need exactly. to pay attention to. Yes. Just to put exactly, put the spotlight on the match. Yes. It would have been perfect. But um, yeah, he didn't do it. And it kind of, it was announced later on, you know, and shout out to Excalibur. Because this man is not getting paid enough money. The way he ran down the matches at the very end, too, the man was out of breath. Commentary was talking yes. about it, too. Like, dang, man, Tony yep. Schiavone. He stumbled a little bit, he, but he recovered. <laughs> <laughs> no, Excalibur did an amazing job. Shout out to Excalibur. That's why I said they're not paying this man enough. And Tony Schiavone was hilarious, too. He said, can we get that again? <laughs> I I said, no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but he One busted his ass, man. So... Kudos to him for doing that. I thought he did a great job, man. With all that, I'm sure it was like a time constraint, and he had yeah. to get it in right yep. before the main event. Just go through, so he push just tried them off and tried to hype them up and have all the energy. And I'm like, man, all right, like this dude, like props, props, Excalibur. So, so you know, with that all said, mm. Devin, to you, like, are you feeling like they've done enough in this? It's not technically the full go home show because we still do have rampage they still do have one more chance yeah, to I really guess. get you going but this is dynamite who's watching this rampage is... nowadays right exactly this is dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> right. and they treated this like a go home show they really yes did. It, like, did. it felt like they wanted they they knew that hey this is where we're going to get the most eyeballs uh before the pay-per-view the mm-hmm. rampage is there but not as many people watch rampage as they do dynamite so for a go home show do you feel like they did enough to say, okay, take my money? Not for the 50. <laughs> Not for the 50. No. And I have a, I think that's the right word, a complaint with Tony. Mm. Mm. So, you know, us in the USA, we are to be charged $50 from the Bleacher Live, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, on this part of of the land, we are familiar with the Fight TV app, right? Yep. So there was a tweet out there, no connection. I don't follow this dude, but shout out to Half K over there. Tagged me. He was like, "Hey, look at this." Uh-oh. And it said, "Hey, <laughs> first words it was like Americans don't look at this, but over here in Europe and other countries, we're gonna we're watching this on the Fight TV app." For fifteen ninety nine, so oh no, fifteen ninety nine. What? So I was like, hold up, and so I was like, you know what? Trust but verify. So what I did, mm-hmm. I further wanted to get confirmation. So I went within our group, Clark Street Wrestling Community on Facebook, mm-hmm. and I tagged Peter. He's from the UK. You know, he's familiar with our show. Comment mm-hmm. on our live stream. Great dude, and he's over there. I was like, hey, is this real? He was like, sent me another screenshot of showing through his mobile device, $15.99 <laughs> on the Fight TV app. I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. that is my complaint with Tony. Like, hey, bruh. Yeah, what about us? Yeah, Understand exactly. the situation. You just, all right, I get it. You you usually do quarterly pay-per-views. But about a month before that, we had double or nothing. I paid the 50, all right? Mm-hmm. I still wanted to watch, still wanted to support AEW because I want that company to succeed, right. all right? This Father's Day, I watch, I wanted to watch Slammiversary. I know I could have watched other ways, but mm-hmm. TNA, they entertained me with their storylines. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm mm-hmm. going to pay the 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I paid the 40. 
I'm glad I paid the four. I would have paid fifty for that, man. <laughs> Super fire pay per view. Slam anniversary, by the way. Yeah. All right, go watch it if you haven't watched it. Great fucking matches, especially the women. They shine in this pay per view. Mm. Shout awesome, out to the women. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. But <laughs> all right, Tony, we're right here. We're coming just off the of slam anniversary for me, and you want me to drop another fifty? Woo! All right, my guy. <laughs> yeah, right, I'm man. a family man. I got certain responsibilities. I got a car that I use yeah. and weigh gas is right now, bro. Come on, man. Yeah. Fifty. Yeah, I'm just. I, I'm right 50. there with you, man. Like, you know, a lot of 50. the things. Like, look at look at uh, <laughs> like Peacock gives you so much value, and included in that is WWE where you can watch the premium live events. Premium live events. You know, and it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm I'm happy to pay that because I love professional wrestling and it it's a value. Like instead yes. of paying 50 for every one of those pay-per-views, literally just paying the monthly fee is is like, okay, I'm good I'm good with that. And then on top of that, you got all the other subscriptions that we're already paying for. Now me and my brothers, like we split the the subscription so mm. you know it's a share thing between the hulu and the disney oh. and the netflix and the paramount plus and all that prime <laughs> yeah, like literally prime, prime too shit you know what i'm saying yeah. but then to on top of all of that and then you know you're living your life you know you gotta yes. you just just pay rent and and, and groceries and yeah. just like transportation and all that like it's for a for a working class person to say, all right, every time like AEW, I'm gonna pay fifty for fifty. Yeah, like you gotta earn that, man. You gotta mm. earn that money. You gotta really grab me, and so to the point where I'm saying, I get take my money. Like for instance, I'm a I'm a gamer. Yep. When God of War Ragnarok comes out, best believe I don't care how much that game costs. I'm gonna make sure <laughs> I'm getting that. I'm getting it because I'm a huge God of War fan. And the first game didn't let me down, right? So 60 bucks, 70 bucks, I will pay it. No problem, right? So, yeah, when the next Spider-Man comes out, believe I am getting that game. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just I'll pay for that because they've earned that with me. With AEW, it's like, okay, each pay-per-view, you're trying to build me up again for that next pay-per-view. It can't just be that. Oh, just because of my loyalty, I'm just gonna throw that out, you know, and just just give you that, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like so there's that, and then then to hear that it's cheaper across the pond, it's like now I'm even pissed off now. Now I'm now I'm just getting angry. Like you guys yeah. really just overcharging us over here for yeah. for this show, like. Peter it's said just, it was just 13 pounds for his pockets. Dude, that's that's crazy. That's it crazy. It must be nice, bro. It must be nice. <laughs> yep. Seriously, it must be nice. I would have understood. All right, everybody getting charged 50. Okay, I get it. Wrestling is a business. All right. But when you start to exclude a certain people, I'm like, all right, you yeah. charging them what? Right. And you charging us what? Right. Nah. Right. Bro. Complaint. <laughs> right. I didn't even pay that for WrestleMania. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Two night event, and I, it, it was cheaper than mm-hmm. Forbidden Door. Like, that's 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 crazy to say. And yes, it's a quarterly thing. There aren't as many pay per views when you break it down, you know, over the course of a year. All right. You know, you can compare the, the cost. I get it. But it's still like for that one event, if you just take it event by event and to say this one's 50 and like, you know, SummerSlam and, and, and all the other ones are not, are cheaper. And yes. then forget about comparing it to WWE and all the other companies. Just saying, hey, it's cheaper in other places of the world. Like, but here in the states, we're getting charged fifty. Yeah, like gas prices going up here. You know, it's Dickless. just like insane. Ridiculous. You doing this to us? <laughs> really? Right. Come on, man. I'm a parent. I got kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, dude. they not cheap. Kids man. are not cheap. Like All right, kids, mortgage, like, come on, yes. man. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot that we're paying for. We're living our lives. We ain't got billions like Tony here, you know, in the Khan family. We ain't made like that. Yeah, man. Working I didn't grow up class. with money like that, bro. Right. Would have been cool. Oh, have man. like a rich dad and like grow up with some money like that. That would have been nice, right? <laughs> but hey. People ain't got it like that just, All right. 50. So, 
people, you know, I can understand like some people are gonna make some decisions, say, you know what, like I'm not I'm not paying for that. Like I'm gonna find other means to see it. And hey, yep. there are situations now where like movie theaters are showing the pay-per-views, and you were talking about that. We were talking about that. Yep. Fifteen dollars, go to a movie yep. theater and watch the pay-per-view that way. I would much rather do that, you know, in that situation than to pay the full fifty. Yep. You Fifteen know, minute just, drive for me just to go to the movie theater. That's it. All right, hey, cool. That's that's perfect. That's perfect. Yep. So that I, I think that's another consideration for these pay per views that I think AEW is going to have to look at. You know, if they had like let's say they had a network, they did like a, a, a AEW network and had the ROH um, content on there. You know, with the AEW content and then all the pay per views were included within that too. And they said, hey. 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's something I'd be interested in because even they did 20, because I was like, yeah, it makes sense. 20, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll pay it for what if they're provided content, right? If you got the content (laughs) and we got to see that content, exactly. (laughs) Because with WWE, they give us a lot lot of content, content. like a lot, lot. and then there's still Peacock that you're getting along with that. So, all the stuff that they have too, it's like, oh, it's kind of it's just a no brainer at that point. I get a wrestling fan, movies, the office, yeah. Saw a movie called Sakaro. I was like, "Holy shit!" That yep, was, yep. That was when the good. Olympics was happening, boom, you got yeah. that too. Like, yeah. it's just it's so much. It's so much. So, yeah, out of value. <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely a consideration, you know, when it comes to the business side of all of this. But let's get over to the wrestling side of all of this because, again, yes, it, are we at a point where you know the go home show got us to be like, "Oh yeah, give me my money." Not necessarily, but that does not mean that we don't have excitement for some of these matches. Right. We're going to go down the card. We're going to give our predictions, tell you how we feel about the matches overall. So let's start things off here, and I'm, I'm going to rearrange the, the order because, like I said, mm. that fatal four-way for the IWGP Championship, that's really my most anticipated match. We'll so I'm going to hold off on that oh. one because they have that way at the bottom. I'm like, nah, nah, okay. nah, nah, nah. nah. We're not doing that first. We're going to save that. <laughs> <laughs> so the first match we're going to bring up, I think they made that official tonight. It is Matt and Nick Jackson of the Young Bucks. We've got El Fantasmo and Hookaleo of Bullet Club versus Darby Allen, Sting. And we have Shingo Takagi and Hiromu Takahashi of Los Ingobernables. I hope I said that right. My man. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) <laughs> I went for it. I went for it. Right, just one. like Excalibur. Just, you, <laughs> yeah, man, just, just go for it. Just go, go, go. Keep going. You're right. <laughs> so with this one, it's, I guess, making this decision, I think I'm going to go with the Young Bucks and just the Bullet Club reunion over Darby Sting and Shingo and and Hiromu, I just feel like, first of all, I feel like this match, probably outside of of Sting, we're going to, well, no, actually, I shouldn't say that because the last time Sting was in a match like this, he was jumping off of stuff doing and crazy shit, doing crazy shit. So <laughs> Sting included, I feel like it's going to be <laughs> chaos. Like, yeah. I feel like this match, there's going to be stuff going on all over the arena. Um, it should be a lot of fun. Um, but for, something tells me that, you know, with the momentum of them having just become the new tag team champions, I feel like they're going to keep going with that momentum. We still don't know when Kenny Omega is necessarily going to come back. Um, but I think the the smart thing to do here would be to keep the Young Bucks now looking strong, build up to Kenny Omega coming back. And then we can have, you know, something with the Undisputed Elite and and uh, that that trio of Kenny and the Young Bucks just kind of colliding finally so now story-wise we know tony khan may not be thinking that way at all when it comes to this but i just feel like that's what i would do in this situation um love darby love sting but for me and the new japan side of this i'll be honest like for me there's not a whole lot of familiarity with those guys hikaleo i've seen him a couple times in AEW, and i've seen a few matches in, in new japan and and also, too, in uh, I think in Impact, he he showed up a couple times um, a couple months ago too. But um, I'm yeah, gonna focus yeah. more on the AEW side, and with that, I'm gonna say I feel like the momentum of the Young Bucks maybe building up on top of that, you know, and keeping them hot would be the way I would go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Young Bucks side of this matchup. 
yeah, I'm gonna go with the Young Bucks too as well. I only, I wish I can talk about a story with this because I feel like I want to give more, yeah. <laughs> but I can't. So right, I just got right. focused on the wrestling and right. Okay, you know, all right, I'll focus on the wrestling. Which Young Bucks are gonna bring it? Because to your point, you know, they got the momentum with both being two time first ever two time mm-hmm. tag mm-hmm. team champions. Mm-hmm. You know, so give them, I'm gonna give them respect on that. That's what's up. That what's up. But, uh, yeah, you make a strong point about not being familiar with the updated roster for New Japan because yeah. I'm in that same boat. So I'm going I'm to lean heavy on AEW tonight. Might might try to lean on, like, Dynamite because it just finished. So yeah. of trying to, you know, trying to form some type of, uh, see if I could pick New Japan out of that. But we'll yeah. see. But I'm going to go with Young Bucks, bro. Young Bucks all the way. Yeah, and also what I'm excited about, too, with this pay-per-view is to be able to, you know, pick up, have a new uh, point, jumping off point for New Japan. Yeah. Because what's what's great about this pay-per-view for an American audience would be, hey, you're getting to see some people that maybe you're seeing them for the first time. Maybe you know the names, but you don't know how they necessarily wrestle in the match. Or maybe you've seen them wrestle a couple times, but you're not that familiar. And so seeing this, they can gain new fans. And then, you know, now there's there's starting to be more consistency around New Japan again. You know, the pain, pandemic was was hard on a lot of companies um, with New Japan. I remember going on YouTube and going through the history of New Japan and trying to catch up. But then when coming when came to watch the shows, it was hard to even find like those those episodes to watch yeah. to continue when when my interest was really hot. So now it's like, OK, this is kind of a new jumping off point, I feel that. Yeah. I can watch this pay per view and say, okay, now from here, all right, I'm, I'm, you know, wanting to see more about, you know, Shingo, Hiromu, you know, or even the Bullet Club side. Hukaleo is a guy that I heard a lot about, and we've seen him again in, in uh, AEW yeah. a couple times. Yep. His wrestling, I've seen him I in Impact like too. Yeah. yeah, he's decent. You know, yeah. like he's a tall dude. He's a tall, you know, yeah, like, tall as shit. Just, I want to see more. You know, before I say like, you know, how I really feel about him overall, I want to give more of a chance. Um, and I think this is great. That this is great that he has the showcase and a, and a return to the Bullet Club for the Young Bucks. Like yeah. I guess they say once you're Bullet Club, you're always Bullet Club. So they never really left Bullet Club technically. Um, but this is like they said it here on the show. It's like, hey, like this is us being like back in the fold and <laughs> and just representing Bullet Club again with this match. So it'll be fun to see like what they do and how they play around with that. So, you know, I think it'll be a fun match. Definitely chaos. I think it'll definitely be chaos. It will. It will. Did your interest fall off with New Japan when Kenny left? Um, I mean, yeah, because I think what I... Okay, so when AEW first started, what I basically thought it was, was New Japan coming to the States. Mm. And so, like, you know, Kenny and the Young Bucks were going to kind of bring an usher in. I thought there would be more of a partnership, honestly. And we would have seen more wrestlers from yeah. Japan showing up in AEW and kind of that being like the American showcase for New Japan. So it's, in a way, they've, you know, with the whole Forbidden Door, they've they've slowly done that here and there, having wrestlers come in. Um, so I, I won't say necessarily lessen my interest in New Japan. It was more so that, I thought that AEW was going to be that extension of New Japan that now I can see on television every week. And it's kind of been sometimes like that, but not consistently. So I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to really answer that question because I, I, I'm still very interested in New Japan. I just feel like the ability to see them consistently being what it was during the pandemic, like it was non-existent. Yeah. And, you know, just the history is rich. In New Japan, like if you really dig into it, man, I mean, it's just a there's just so much to that history. And literally, like if you're listening and you know nothing about New Japan, and you're like, hey, like, how can I figure out like where to even start? I mean, this pay-per-view, I think will be a great point. But also if you go on New Japan's YouTube channel, they have some great like explanations and documentaries and story of a lot of these wrestlers that are there and a lot of the factions that are there and really the factions. It's a lot of factions. That yeah. is where I'm like, yeah. ooh, I yeah. really have fan, I have yeah. fun with this and become a yeah. fan of these factions. So, yeah. like Shinsuke, yeah. he was part of a faction called Chaos. Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Man. Yeah. yeah. But. Just, just so much, man. Kenny's history, you know, like just everything. It's just, 
it, it, there's so much. It's so rich. So definitely check that out. Um, and yeah, that's that's the fun of this for me as far as like my excitement for Forbidden Door. There's again, there's matches that I'm really interested in, but it's also kind of just jumping into the New Japan scene, you know, and seeing them wrestle and then just saying, okay, like I don't want this to end. I want like this to said, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So will it be strong enough though? Because we got well, we got no stories. We just it's just leaning heavy on the wrestling. <laughs> That's not me. Not so enough. it's like they might it might be a banger, but I'm like, will it will will it get me? Is that the tipping point for me to start? All right, let me see what's going on with New Japan too. Because even even New Japan, you know, phenomenal wrestling. Very yeah. you know like sometimes they have the hardcore, very technical, very fucking stiff. But yeah. The, the stories around it, you know, to before it gets before they have their match before it gets to the ring, I think they they lack at that too. For me, yeah, no, you're right, and I think the best entry point into New Japan for me, I think, is going to be Jay White. I think following Jay White, you know, because he's Good a great point. storyteller. Him yes. on the mic, yes. he's very he charismatic. He got bars, yeah. Yes. And so listening to him, I'm like, ooh, yes, yeah. yes. I'm like, like, that's a leader. That's a leader for that, the club. I, I, I say that to him. Yes. So that's a good point. I'll give you that. He could be the tipping point for me yeah. out the, for this match. Like, you know what? Let me see what he's doing. In New I Japan wanna see, too. yeah. If nothing else, there might be individual wrestlers that you come out of this saying, I want to follow him. I want to follow him. I yeah. Mean, I already knew Will Ospreay. I've known him for years. But you know, this I think for a lot of people will put eyeballs on him as well. I think people will see he's a phenomenal wrestler and his character work is starting to come through even more the older he gets. And so, you know, I think that there's that's another guy, too. You know, it's funny because I saw a um, a YouTube video on uh, Paul Heyman's YouTube channel where he, it was uh, it was like a an event. It was almost like a like a uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but they were like in a hall. And Paul Heyman, there was a bunch of wrestlers there that I guess he had invited, but it was yeah. also regular people in the crowd. And Will Ospreay, young Will Ospreay was there. It was like maybe six years ago. And Ooh. he called him up to the stage. And he's just like, I just want you to know that I have the utmost respect for you. And, you know, you are one of the, the, the up and coming wrestlers. And I just wanted you to know that. And then um, he offered him a contract from Evolve. And he said, I don't want you to say anything now. I just want you to know that if you, you know, first we want to help you get your passport situation, your travel yeah. situation figured out. And, and then um, if you show, so choose, you know, Evolve would love to have you. We're not saying give up New Japan or give up anything else you're doing. We're just saying, like, when you're not wrestling for New Japan and all those other companies, you have an opportunity. So and, you know, he looked kind of blown away and, and, and like, wow. So, but for whatever reason, that never transpired. Wow. But it was cool seeing just the respect yeah. for Will Ospreay from a guy like Paul Heyman. Yeah. You know, like, recognizing that talent early on. So well, He yeah, got something. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. He's special. Will Ospreay special, man. So, I remember him and Ricochet and just, just like, the two of them, like, were the guys back years ago where I was like, man, these two are, as far as wrestling, just purely the wrestling. Um, they, there's, there's nothing they can't do, you know? So they stood out, um, Ray Phoenix has, has stood out for years. So, you know, but back to Will Ospreay, I think that's another guy that coming out of this show, I mm -hmm. think will, you know, fans that didn't know him before, they're going to want to see more for sure. <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah, man. All right. Another guy that I think could also be interesting for people to see, and we don't have a full matchup for this yet, but Zack Sabre Jr., um, he's going to be wrestling at Forbidden Door. Yeah. Um, some people may know him from their Cruiserweight Classic that happened that. Yep. on the WWE Network. Yep. Very technical wrestler, just submission specialist, just great all-around wrestler. So it'll be fun to see him. Uh, Brian Danielson is going to choose a replacement. Brian Danielson will not be able to comp compete at Forbidden Door. Uh, doctors won't clear him for that match. So we're going to see who that replacement is. And really, I mean... It's anyone's guess. You know, there's so many names yeah. that are getting thrown out. Cesaro's name gets thrown out every other day now. Um, Johnny Gargano's name. Expectations are low. So. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> With AEW on things like this, you know, I think of the Jokers in the past yeah. and, like, and who they've had. And I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. So 
I'm sure it's going to be a great match. Um, I'm going to say Zack Sabre Jr. is going to beat whoever this is because I don't think, with, with like with you, I'm going to keep the expectations low. I don't think it's going to be like a blockbuster name um, that's going to come through the Forbidden Door yeah. or, you know, that 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 Brian Danielson is going to pick. So blindly, I'm actually going to take Zack Sabre Jr. to mm. win this match against whoever this is going to be. I think I'm going to go on the opposite side of the fence and go with the the, 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 the debut, wild card. The wild card because, okay. you know, it's Daniel Bryan he's, or Bryan Danielson, BD. He's, you know, he's putting young, he's giving you the stamp of approval. Like, bro, you yeah. got to carry this. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a big assignment. You got to beat, you know, Zach, Zach Sabre. And then you got to go and beat in the blood and guts match. So yeah. you got to keep that going. So because of the blood and guts match, too. Uh, oh, wow. I forgot to turn that off. My bedtime, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You must have heard it. <laughs> At a certain age, you got, you know, little reminders. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah a little late night recording right now. <laughs> uh, but like I was saying, man, you know, you got to carry that momentum into blood and guts. You don't want to lose, even if it's a banger match, and then you still got blood and guts. So, I'm gonna go with the debut. So the mystery. Okay. The mystery. I mean, I look, I am secretly wanting this really to be Johnny Gargano. Like mm. I really would love it. If it were Johnny Gargano and Johnny Gargano were in the the Blackpool club yes. with these guys, Ooh. that would be that'd be Ooh. pretty sick, especially with how much he loves Regal. Like yeah. it just would make sense. And then to have him and Brian Danielson together, these two guys that it just still blows my mind how WWE never got had that happen. You know, I mean, really shouldn't because that's just, you know, I mean, WWE, Finn Balor and AJ Styles, it's like forever to see that that could be anything. <laughs> and then they waited till it was too late. So right. it shouldn't really surprise me. But, you know, it's still amazing because they're very similar with the underdog story that they both have. Um, and they're separate fan bases. Both are very passionate about them. Um, so to, to have Johnny Gargano make the debut in this way would be – Pretty awesome. Um, I'm still on the fence, though, about even Johnny Gargano going to AEW. I feel like, you know, it's it, he could do anything. He could go to Impact, you know, yeah, for all we know. Yeah, so yeah. Um, we'll see. So if it's Johnny Gargano, I'm definitely going to be rooting for Johnny. I don't care. Damn the prediction. I'm rooting for my Could guy. Be. Right, right, but, right. Uh, I'm That's the only stipulation that, that, that you would change your decision. Yeah. <laughs> I already know that. No, no. There's no stipulation for that. I'm, I'm sticking with my pick. But, wow. yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to be wrong. If it's Johnny Gargano and Gar Johnny Gargano wins, that'd be totally cool. I got you. It is decided then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've got a three-way winner-takes-all tag team match for the ROH World Tag Team Championships and the IWGP Tag Team Championships. So we've got FTR featuring Dax Hardwood and Cash Wheeler. We've got United Empire featuring Great Ocon and Jeff Cobb. And then we've got Rapungi Vice featuring Trent Beretta and Rocky Romero. So in this one, I'm going to give you this one first, Devin. Who you got win this matchup? Bro, FTR, of course. <laughs> and no one else. Who else is going to take it? Who's going to gonna come out with all the gold? It's going to be <laughs> FTR. The, they are the best tag team in AEW. I might put Usos above them. Maybe if we ever come down to do tag team rankings, yeah, for <laughs> for, for AEW and WWE, ooh, you know. rank them against each other. Oh yeah. boy, yeah. Maybe Ooh. possible future episode. Are we teasing? Maybe. Well, I think we're teasing one. I think you on the spot just created another another topic. Yeah, like episode. <laughs> right, right. Noted. <laughs> but yeah, man, FTR. Uh, it's it's another. It's really no story. But I'm, I'm just excited for this match because I already mm -hmm. know what FTR is gonna gonna bring. Dax Harwood been putting out bangers just in singles competition too as well. Yeah. Like, man, I give him respect, man. And him and that Will Osprey match was definitely a banger with even with just no story, just just the just the wrestling in there. Just him telling the story. Because yeah. I think I said this in the Top of Wrestling Talk group or in our group, in our Facebook group, but I said they probably they're probably one of the best FTR together and Dax one of the best in-ring storytellers that I've just seen because yeah. they tell a very 
I want to I want to dumb it down and say simplistic story, but it's a story that that is still like gravitating. Very old school. Yes, yes, good. Yeah, yeah, yes, very old school. Very, very, yeah. That's the right word, man. And and I and I and that's the type of wrestling I like, man. You know, you can do all the high flying. That's cool, but you down there making a a move, just some some simple, but you know, like, oh man, he's really putting his elbow on his back and just mm-hmm. see the aggression on his face. Like, man, he's really getting into it like that. Stuff like that. That gets me excited for type for for that type of wrestling, man. So I already know they're gonna put that type of classic on. So yeah, FTR, it is decided. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna say FTR is gonna win this one. Um, Story wise, like you said, there's not a whole lot here. I mean, FTR and Rapungi Vice have been teaming up uh, a couple times here, so there's kind of the we're cool, we have this respect for each other, but we're going to go against each other for these tag team titles now. Um, and there hadn't really been any issues like infighting that I've seen no. that have been very heated. So no real tension there. It's just going to be, like I said, very respectful on those on that side. But then you've got uh, United Empire, you know, which have been, you know, at odds with, with FTR and with, you know, Rapungi Vice and Best Friends in general – you know, following uh, Will Ospreay's lead, you know, they've been going at it. So they've been trying to tease that and build that up. But to your point, I mean, we don't have anything personal that's been going on here. They didn't get on the mic and and reveal anything specific. Um, They didn't pull a Christian cage and talk about the man's family like they did with Jungle Boy and (laughs) the fact that his mom was looking at him like he wanted him to be his daddy. And, you know, that's a piece of shit. Right, you made a piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> Shout out to Christian was, Cage because I, was like, I gotta dang. say, I was not really feeling like I. You can see the turn coming, you know, just to sidetrack us a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. see the turn coming. Yeah, you know, with this, and I was like, ah, I don't know how I feel. And actually, even when like that, the piece of shit thing that he said that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. But then when he came out here, I was like, okay, he's just gonna cut a promo, and all right, what's this gonna be? Yeah. And then at first it was kind of slow and I'm like, I don't know. But then he started getting into it and he's telling Tony, like, raise the mic up a little bit. And he's talking to the crowd, you know, telling them <laughs> to shut the hell up, like, be more respectful, blah, blah, blah. But then when yeah. he started digging into Jungle Boy uh, about, you know, <laughs> well, first he said, when he threw me out, you know, he cost me some money. So I had to get my money back. And so that's why I tagged along to go ahead and get my money back. So I said, you know, I'll earn an uh, easy paycheck. Uh, that's why he you lost know. me. I'm like. Yeah. At first I was like, ah, okay. Mm. But <laughs> where it really got good is when they when Tony was talking about what went viral with, with the whole, like, you raised a piece of shit. And he talked about his mom. And he said, yeah. you know, your mom was looking at me in a certain type of way, like. She want she she made me felt a little something, you know, like and and wanted me to be your daddy. And I'm like, ooh, okay, this is that's that's kind of cutting deep. And then he talked about his father and how his father's dead, and that you know he's not your dad, but he can replace him and this and that. And I was like, wow, okay, like Christian is pushing the envelope. Obviously, they must have had a conversation to say that that was okay. Yeah. Um, but he pushed the envelope in a way that. You know, I was like, oh, shit. You know, like I felt uncomfortable listening to Christian say that. And I was expecting Jungle Boy to come out, but they're trying to sell like Jungle Boy's injury, maybe injury, waiting a yeah, week, yeah. you know. And so you had Luchasaurus Comparative. come out and then Luchasaurus, you know, like put this man in a chokehold, uh, yep. strangle him to death. And Christian Cage had the mic still in his hand. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know, do I tell this man? Like, oh, 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 let's talk about this. You're like a son to me. Let's talk. <laughs> So I, I at least appreciate the effort there yeah. to try to tell a story that will get us more invested in this. To your point, I'm with you that um, in the beginning of this, you know, his reasoning, like I was kind of like, mm, this is going to be lame right. if this is all it is. Cause right, about money? It, bro. <laughs> bro, <laughs> right. it, seemed like it, was, it seemed like it was more personal than that. Right. Like you, yeah, exactly. saying you raised exactly. a piece of shit. You hit, you hit dude with the concerto. I'm expecting yeah. something. Right, but he did right. finish strong. I, I'll give him he finished that. strong he with the Luchasaurus. You know, he, he's on him on his side now. So I'm like, okay, yeah. things just got very interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely did better at the end than they did at the beginning with that with that whole promo. <laughs> I even think he kind of. I don't know. Maybe if it was like that was always the way it was supposed to go, or if he changed his mind and kind of pulled an audible because 
it felt like it was just even the pacing, like in the beginning was a little bit off, yeah. you know, in the way he was telling it. But then it's like something snapped when, you know, he just started talking about the family and everything. I'm like, OK, now this is getting more. I'm feeling this. Yes. I'm, I'm tuning in. I'm sitting up. You know, before I was just kind of like lounging. Now I'm I'm sitting up in my seat a little bit at attention. Like, oh, what what the fuck? What did you just say? Yes. Like, you can't say that about about <laughs> Luke Perry. Like, come on, uh, man. right, right. <laughs> like, this is terrible. So, you know, storytelling. I like that they're making the effort here with this uh, three way matchup. That isn't prevalent at all. So you'd like to see more of that. You know, when we talk about story with AEW. And that they don't really tell yeah. stories that well. This is what we're talking about, just to kind of highlight that a little bit. And so I appreciate on the one side the attempt to try to tell a story, but you know, with most of these matches here, there really isn't that level nah. of storytelling happening. Yeah, now nah. <laughs> that I'm looking at it, baby. No, not even yeah. that. Nah, you nah, go nah, down just, the car. I was about, about to say something. This. I was like, no, nah, well, no. Nah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, let, we're going to keep on going through this. But, yeah, definitely, like, when it comes to storytelling, there isn't that much. Like, with this next matchup, we've got the AEW Women's World Championship match, Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. Again, in this one, I, from a story standpoint, it's just two baby faces that, you know, they're both liked by the crowd. You know, they have respect for each other. They've come to each other's aid when they were in trouble these last couple weeks. Um, they both won their last matches, so they're trying to make them feel both strong. But it's, I don't know, man. Sometimes these matches can work when you have two faces going against each other, right? Sometimes it's okay because it's like you see the best of the best and, you know, you're going to get the let's go, you know, let's go, Tony, let's go, Rosa. Like, y y that's yeah. cool. Yeah, but, a double chant. Yeah, and, and that could be cool. However, <laughs> there's something about having it be dirt but. simple where it's like, hey, you're the good guy, and I'm rooting for you, and damn it, you're the heel, and you make me sick, and no way do I want to see you win. MJF is a master at that, just making you invested and caring that he's an asshole He's been dogging the hell out of this person and talking about their them and their family and all this. And it's just like, oh, man, you're awful. Like, and, and it makes you want the good guy to win even more. So you're even more yeah. invested. And yeah. so with this matchup, it's like I, I'm a fan of both of, of these women. I feel like they're both great, great wrestlers. I agree. I don't have like a pull one way or another as far as – like, I favor one more than the other. You know, I have my pick. You know, my pick is, my pick is pretty clear as to who I'm picking. It feels yeah. like there's no way in hell that there's going to be a title change. I feel like definitely Thunder Rosa is going to come out on top and she's going to win this thing because it feels like she just won it and really not much has happened yet in her yeah. title reign to justify taking it off of her right now. So I'm going with Thunder Rosa. Like, that's my pick. But story-wise, I feel like, yeah, this suffers because – there really isn't much to get you invested in like, oh, maybe I do want, you know, Tony Storm to win. Or maybe Tony Storm can win because uh, she's in Thunder Rosa's head and Thunder Rosa's off her game and she's distracted by this and that going on. Like, there's none of that. It's just like, hey, Thunder Rosa's winning. Tony Storm's winning. No story. They're both good people. No story. Let's fight. <laughs> no story. This is Dynamite. It's just an episode of Dynamite. It's just... <laughs> No story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I I really don't have a dog in this fight. I, I really don't because I, I'll give you pushback. Sometimes you can make two faces, uh, a two face, not two face, but two faces, you know, work for a yep. story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Say it! <laughs> Either die a hero or see yourself live long enough to become the villain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm going to take it back to WWE because they told a few stories. And one that comes to my head right now would be Don't actually. No, no, not even not that. Okay. Not even not that. I'll go more recent. I'll go John Cena and Daniel Bryan. Okay. When they went at yeah. each other. And <laughs> Daniel Bryan said, you know, he called John Cena a parody of wrestling. I thought <laughs> that was one of the hilarious bars. And I was like, holy shit, we going there. 
Like mm-hmm. they're the you know John Cena is not a heel; he's a face, face the company. Yeah, and you got the underdog, uh, Daniel Bryan, and you know the the guy that everybody likes, the every the everyday guy. You know what I'm saying? The blue collar dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that works in his favor, and these two dudes just oh man, you just saw building up like this competition, like. The, the heat uh, uh, of the battle, like I'm the best. No, I'm the best. And mm-hmm. they told a well, good story. And I think this could have been applied here, you know, instead of just match, match, match. Maybe you could have did a tag team together. All right, let's go against maybe one of the tag teams to have for a dub and see if you guys can, you know, coexist. And then Will maybe... they coexist? <laughs> exactly. Something simple like that. And then yeah. we tree branch into like, oh shit, here we go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The fan favorite gets the champion. Even simpler than that, though. Oh shit! What about okay. a contract signing. <laughs> <laughs> I know WWE does that to death, but but, the, but Thunder the Rosa, nice thing she, about contract she don't signing do, sometimes. She don't, do, she don't do promos though like that because you got to do. You know, it, it has yeah, to be a promo. I, I, that's not I, her I, thing. You know what though? I'm sorry if that's you. I feel like you just have to give them that chance. You got to give them that chance, and if they go out there and they fail, they fail. But they don't give them that opportunity necessarily to do that, to, like, have those type of promos. Like, she's the champion, and Thunder Rosa has a lot of passion, you know. So I feel like if she speaks with passion and she she spits facts, she doesn't Mm. try to be too over the top and literally just sticks to, you know, like like the rivalry between her and Tony – and maybe there's something there where they can pick it out. Like when uh, when Randy Orton went against AJ Styles, like their <laughs> promos back uh, back and forth yeah. ab- about their histories, you know, in TNA and all that. Like it was just so juicy to listen to that, you know. And they, these two women have literally been all over the world. Yeah. I'm sure they have stories that, you know, they can pull from their time – wrestling in any of these companies indie companies they've been in so for me it would have been interesting to kind of even say like for thunder rosa like people compare you to me and i think that that's that's bullshit because you're you're not on my level and here's why you know and like go down the list of of reasons why she's the best and literally want to claim that number one spot solely like no one else is better than me period and that is why i'm champion that is why i want to represent aew yeah. And, so, and then she can even talk about the fact that she was in WWE. Yeah, you're like, you she walked out on it. Like, you, and you want to be champion? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You couldn't hang over there and you came crawling over here and you want to take my spot? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been something Yes. Like that. Yes. That would have got me. Nothing. Yeah, we got nothing. We got none of that. They're just shaking hands and, you know, holding up. The title, you know, one week it's Tony Storm holding up the title. The next week it's Thunder Rock. Like, I just. A whole bunch nah, of what ifs. Nah. You know. And then at the end of it, like, Thunder Rose is just going to win. I just feel like mm. it's going to be a good match, but she's going to win. And I don't know. I just. Would it be follow up after this? Would it just be like, maybe <sighs> she'll win, but it'd be like, did she really win? Some type of, like, a question mark? I. Uh... I don't know, man, because it's tough. Because I know with AEW, they typically don't do these rematches, although they're starting to do it a little bit more now. But it's like the only the women's match, though. Yeah. I don't know. I feel Okay, if I was booking this, you know, I would be happy to have it be a series of matches because these two are just that good. But I think I would go away from that because I'm not going to have Thunder Rosa lose. I'm, mm. I'm just not going to do it. Like, it's too soon. Like, I would do a series of matches, like, towards the end of Thunder Rosa's reign so that, you know, you could have, okay, Thunder Rosa wins, but then you – basically how Thunder Rosa won the championship. She had a series of matches with Britt Baker. Britt Baker. You know, and Britt Baker ended up losing on the last one, and that's how Thunder Rosa became champion. Yeah. But, again, that was at the tail end of her title reign. So I feel like you do the same thing kind of with Thunder Rosa, you know, if you're going to have her lose to someone like Tony Storm. Yes, she's like right there with her wrestling wise. It's like so razor thin close their matches. Um, but in this case, just have her lose, have her work her way back up the rankings, you know, <laughs> use the rankings. Dark elevation. <laughs> we know how this works now. I know how this works. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, build up the wins. Rankings yeah. matter. The rankings 
matter. <laughs> Shout out to Circle uh, of Debate. What's up, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Anything you want to say on this matchup? Like, I think it's going to be a fun match, but you know, story wise, there's it. nothing there. Right, nothing, man. We just talking about a bunch of what ifs right now. You know, exactly. This exactly. is a what if for Britain Door on the Clark Street Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're like booking. What out if? Like, <laughs> hey, it's like fantasy booking slash predictions. That's what yes, right yes. <laughs> hey, we're going, we're going, we're going to do this. Right, right. <laughs> well, let's see what we come up for this one. The IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship is on the line. You've got the champ, Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy. Um, for this one, for me, uh, Osprey retains. Like I just see Will Osprey retaining. Um, they just they lost tonight, and yeah, Will Osprey I think has only won once in AEW so far. Yeah, like, on Rampage, his debut, they lost too. Yeah, he so, <laughs> yeah, his debut, his debut lost. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a tag team, but you know, tag, yeah, he hasn't lost a singles match. No, 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 no. every tag team match he's yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, tag teams just ain't his, his shit. Right, I, it's seeming <laughs> like that's not his thing. At least right. in AEW, tag teams are not his thing. Um, but yeah, I think Will Ospreay wins this. I think he retains his championship. Um, Orange Cassidy making his return. You know, he looked good in his uh, in, in the match tonight. So it's it good to see that he's healthy. Um, I think they'll have a good match. There'll be, you know, a good amount of comedy in it with with uh, Orange Cassidy doing his thing. It'll be uh, entertaining. Yeah. Yep. Will Ospreay selling, you know, is, is going to be interesting to watch too. Tonight too, he, he got a, I forget what move it was that knocked him out, but then he like went stiff as a board and his arms went in the air. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. So I think it'll be fun. But um, yeah, overall, I think Will Ospreay is going to win. No huge story here nah. um you know they've been having these matches back and forth on dynamite on on rampage but you know nothing like deeply personal that i'm seeing so yeah but will spread things gonna win same same uh orange cassidy did look good that superman punch to the tribal chief saluting this tribal chief i get that and one with the <laughs> superman punch you know hey all right you know it was clean it was sharp right man. right you I'm, learned, what percentage learned power from the best superman punch was that what you learned percentage from the best. power oh he gave all that's 100 percent. that that, that, that was stick. yeah that one was good that yeah, was yeah. yeah i, I okay. give 100 percent easily man yeah nice. I'm, no question <laughs> I, respect because he learned from the best tribal chief you know so respect <laughs> Be the ones <laughs> nice. that said a lot too because Orange Cassidy, man, he never really puts 100% in anything. Like, no. you know, the thumbs up is like 25%, Half ass, right? <laughs> right? Not even that, maybe 16, maybe. 11. It's right. an odd ass number, 12, 12.25%. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> That's orange. That's orange for you. I love him. I love him, man. Orange Cassidy, he's, just, he's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hundred percent power on that. I agree. I agree, man. I think that was a that was a sharp uh, Superman punch that he that he landed for the for the dub there. So nice job there. But yeah, do you where are you at with this matchup? You got Orange. You got Will Ospreay. Who you? Got? I said Will. Will Ospreay. Oh, you got you said okay, yeah. okay. Yep. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So we're in agreement there. Will Ospreay yeah. to retain his championship. Moving on to a six man tag team champion. Uh, six no, not tag, not championship. But six man tag match, no go. title on the line. We've got Les Sex Gods, the reunited Les Sex Gods, Chris <laughs> Jericho and Sammy the Wizard. Ah, ah. <laughs> the Wizards, yes. <laughs> They'll be teaming up with Minoru Suzuki, uh, and they will be going against Eddie Kingston, Wheeler Yuta, and Shota Uminu. All right, man. So this one, man, this one's interesting as far as like who's going to win. Um, because there's a champion on Eddie Kingston squad, Ring of Honor champion. Yeah, champion, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, true. That's true. He's That's representing, true. you know, the DCC. I'm just thinking from a story standpoint, what makes the most sense? Because Eddie Kingston definitely, you know, has has beef. Okay. You know, he's got a grudge. He's, 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 gonna, he's gonna murder. You want to kill sure. these dudes, right? He's got, he, <laughs> he got man. He, he got a hit list, my guy. He's like, trying to take this dude out, and he hasn't finished the job. So no, I, I'm trying to think. I'm like, what is he gonna do? Like, what the hell is Eddie Kingston gonna do in this matchup? Um, but then you got, I mean, the reuniting of the sex gods, and I feel like this is the best version of Sammy Guevara when he's with Chris Jericho. Uh, 
Yeah. Like those two together just have so much great chemistry. They do. I was so happy to see them together again today. Like it just it just feels right. So uh how you tricked everybody Suzuki, think he was uh, Fiego like, too. What's that? Last week, how you tricked everybody think he was uh Fiego. Fiego Del Sol? Sol? Yeah. 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 That was that was crazy. When I saw I was like, wait a minute, what the why would Fuego del Sol? But Me then too. I started to notice like a little bigger, like what is going on here? And then Six the pack. camera on his face. I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's Sammy. <laughs> that's Sammy. <laughs> I was like, what the hell would Fuego del Sol do? Yeah. What is he even doing here? Like, what is I was going definitely on? lost. I was like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> what? <Random>. Why? <laughs> I got questions. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a hell of a story. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Wait, this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, gosh. In this one, I think I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm just going to go with Eddie Kingston, Wheeler Yuta, and Shoto Aminu because I want to see Eddie get a dub um over Jericho yeah I, I just I just want to see it I'm rooting for Eddie um Jericho doesn't need a win I mean really Eddie doesn't need a win either neither one of them needs a win but I feel That's like true. it's so personal for for Eddie that he's just gonna go nuts in this matchup um and it's gonna be fun to watch and I think there'll be a lot of momentum the the crowd is gonna go nuts for Eddie Kingston um and they're gonna boo the shit out of Sammy Guevara. They are, especially <laughs> like, Chicago, bro. Chicago, yeah, it's <laughs> so man, predictable no when it comes love. to that. Like, yeah. I already know <laughs> you ain't getting no love, fam. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm go with uh, Team Eddie. I'm gonna go with Team ah, Eddie. I got you. Well, sir, I'm gonna be on the opposite side of the fence. I'm That's going fine. with the sex god, my <laughs> guy, the wizard. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a fireball. Oh, man. Yeah. If he throws a fireball, they're going to yeah. get Yeah. Man, he might get Willa Uta with it. Like, fireball. Pow. <laughs> um, I think from a story standpoint, this is the strongest story for this card because it's mm. very personal, man. Very personal when wins and, and losses don't even matter. Right. These, these, these guys just don't like each other. <laughs> and it's compelling. <laughs> like, how far are you guys willing to go? Like, now you got... <laughs> you got Chris Jericho came up with the JSS. You know what I'm saying? Call himself a wizard now. Right. He, he's off the he's off the rocker. You got Eddie. He's just trying to kill him now. Like you better say what you mean, because I don't mm-hmm. think you're willing to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah. In the end, I'm gonna go with the heels. I connect with Chris Jericho. I like the sex guys. They just came back. Uh, Sammy's getting that heat. I like it. Mm-hmm. That negative response is using to his advantage too, and, and it looks good for uh, Tay Conti too, man. Yes, yes, it does. I it love them. Up. I'm just gonna yes. say, I know a lot of people booing them, they're hating on them. I love Sammy Guevara and Tay Conti. Keep doing y'all thing. Damn everybody else. That's, oh, the that's public right. display of affection. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. Yes. What's so wrong with you? Why would you hate that? They're well, just showing their affection for each other. <laughs> <laughs> All the mouth breathing, like Boo! <laughs> we don't like that. Oh, Love, man. no. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, hating on love, man. Get over it, right, right man. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Man. The sex guys, though. Let's go. Let's sex guys. It is, it is. all right. You're on opposite sides of that one. That'll be fun to watch. See who comes out on top with that. And then we've got a couple of championship matches left. Uh, three of them, indeed. So. The first one will be for the newly created uh, AEW All Atlantic <laughs> Championship. Now, granted, I, I'm not a fan of the fact that they made yet another championship. However, the match that we're going to get, yes. I think, is going to be fire. I think this and the, the competitors in this matchup, it, it's it's intense. All right, so we've got Pac, we've got Miro, we've got Malachi Black, and we've got. Tomohiro Ishii. Ishii. Ah, man, like all stiff strikers. Yeah, this every is gonna be single brutal. one of them. Yes, they're all unique <laughs> and they're all yes. brutal. Yes. And it, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be scary to watch. <laughs> it's gonna be scary to watch. Um, I'm gonna let you go first on the pick, man, because with this one, 
I'm still kind of making up my mind as to who I'm going to pick. Really? There's, yeah. It's pretty simple for me. I already right, know. Go for it, man. Who you got? <sighs> I'm going with the Redeemer. <laughs> Miro. Former. When I send you to your maker, tell him I'm looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. Because he is no longer God's favorite champion. Yeah, we already know who it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Extreme rules last year. God decided to intervene. It's the transfer his powers to the head of the table. <laughs> Simon Chief looked up in the sky with the ones. <laughs> I know who I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God's favorite God. champion. Let's go. <laughs> but Miro, man, he he he's been out for a while. Still looks in phenomenal shape. Uh this match is gonna be a banger. Everybody has a different striking ability, different, you know, uh, characteristics, you know, for this wrestling match. I can't wait. It's going to be a good melting pot. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some good stew. All right. It's going to be fire, super fire. So, hell yeah. Pac, he's going to be an animal. Okay, Black, I can't wait to see what he's going to do just striking wise and and all of this. I'm Mm -hmm. thinking I'm most intrigued for him because he's the ones that got the hands and the feet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just looking for, for from a wrestling standpoint for that. That that piques my interest. But it is Miro, the Redeemer, former God's favorite champion. We the ones, you know, head of the table. I had to get that in there, even though it's AEW. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. It is decided. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this is so this is an issue matchup. I mean, uh, Tomohiro Ishii, he's just a, a bowling ball of a man, man. Just like you look at his his build and that dome, like yes. he's just he he's he's something else. He's something else, and he's a character. <laughs> like it's gonna be fun to see him and Miro. I'm sure they're gonna have a stare down. Mm. I'm sure that's gonna happen. <laughs> and so these two dudes just <laughs> trying to intimidate the shit out of each other. <laughs> that's gonna be fun to see. Um, and then, of course, you've got Malachi and Pac and this, the history that they have, you know, and it just it, it's palpable at this point. You know, they've been at war for so long. Like, you know, we all know the deal. We know they hate each other. And I think that that, that it's not a story that they've really been telling with with words necessarily. But, you know, with these matches, they've been so intense that it's like, OK, I, I I'm excited because. I don't know. It's just the cool factor of both of these guys, really. Yeah. Like, it's just Pac is just so damn, like, just angry all the time, you know? Bastard. Bastard. And just, <laughs> see him just so mad. And I like, and I, I, I dig it. I like it. And then Malachi, just with the 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 faction now yeah. and the entrance, entrance, whole presentation, the presentation, the yes. move set. It's just, and he just seems so in control and of his emotions. Very stoic. Puppet master, oh yes. man, it's just great. It's just great. So, I think this one, as far as matches, I'm excited for. This is one of the top ones for sure. Yeah. Um, this might be my second most anticipated match. Now that mm. I'm thinking about it, looking at all yeah. this, because I, I am really excited to see what happens yeah. here. Um, my pick is gonna be Malachi Black. I'm going with Malachi. Um, Ooh, I feel like I okay. wanted to go with Miro. Yeah. But ah. I, uh, yeah, I was. I really wanted to go with Miro just because I'm so happy to see him back, and he's one of my favorite wrestlers in AEW. Um, he he was my absolute favorite in AEW for yeah. a while there. Yeah. But um, I just think that Malachi I mean, he still hasn't had the champ. He still hasn't had a championship in AEW. And usually, I think it's best when you know when you have a heel as a champion to start things off for a new championship like this. You know, because now everybody's chasing them and you can give them a long title reign. It just it just makes sense. So one of those two dudes winning, I feel like, you know, makes a whole lot of sense. Um, But the fact that Miro was TNT champion and Malachi hasn't had it before and Malachi has this group and it would just give so much to establish the House of Black as like, okay, we're that dominant that now we're starting to collect championships. Um, I'm going with Malachi for that reason, man. I'm I'm. I'm feeling, I'm feeling House of Black. Let's go. I don't hate it because he will be the best storyteller to tell a story from his standpoint and, you know, defending the ACC title. Yeah. (laughs) The AAC. It's AAC. Oh, yeah, the AAC. Yeah, the AAC. I'm thinking about about 
college basketball right college, now. College sports, I know, I know. <laughs> on, on Clark Street, it'll be known as the ACC Championship. Just right, to, there, there we go. It is decided. <laughs> <laughs> this now, the from ACC this standpoint. Yes. From this point forward, it is now known on this show as the ACC Championship. <laughs> it might as well be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but all right. So we've got we've got our picks. You got Miro the Redeemer. I've got Malachi Black. It's gonna be a fun match. Definitely gonna be a fun match. All right. Now, my main event of this show, and I've been holding on to this one because this I'm just so fucking hyped for this matchup. And I, I don't know, maybe they'll make this the co-main because I know the AEW championship is gonna be the uh, main event. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna happen. That's right. That's right. But my main event for this show. Is definitely the IWGP Fatal Four Way kind of teased in the beginning. So we're gonna a real go title, a real yes title, <laughs> not interim. <laughs> no, no, not pretend. No, no fake, no fairy tale, fairy right. tale world championships here. No, no asterisk marks by it. <laughs> no, whoever wins this is the actual champion. <laughs> yes, IWGP. World Heavyweight Champion, defended by Jay White, the current champion, going against Okada, Hangman, Adam Page, mm. and Adam Cole, baby. Baby! Woo! Mm. This match, once this match is done, I might just shut it off. I, I, just, I literally, like, I, this is everything for me. This right here, when I started to see the... All the 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 lines and the 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 storylines kind of coming together in this yeah. way. I was like, "Oh my god, we are going to see a fatal four way." And they just wouldn't fucking confirm it. It was pissing me off. I'm like, if they don't do this, if they do something else, like, oh, we'll just do Jay White versus Hangman one on one. I'd have been so upset. I'd be like, really, really? It was right there for you guys, man. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Call Okada. Get him on the phone. Get him on a plane yes. and let's fucking go. Let's do right. this. Five <laughs> ass to Shot Town. Let's yes. go. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Come on. And Adam Cole, he's ready. He's ready. Like I can see him tease, see them teasing it. So I was just getting so hyped. And finally, they had the shot of all of them tonight, all kind of together, you know, in the ring. And then the stare downs at the end of the altercation. I'm like, oh my God, just say it. Just say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Oh, that's exactly. I'm going to put a clip in that, that, man. Fuck that. I'm going to yes. clip it. <laughs> the Dark Knight. Put it right there. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> and then sure enough, a caliber at the end came through and finally said it. He let us know, yes, indeed, it will be a fatal four-way. And I said, oh, thank goodness. I mean, I wish... We could have gotten it more formal during the show right at the moment when it was all happening, but we got it regardless, so we're here. I'm excited. I'm hyped. Um, and now, even though I'm really hyped up for this matchup, I think it's pretty clear for me who's going to win this match. Oh, yes. uh, for me, it's going to be a retain and still IWGP champion, Jay White, the Switchblade. Switchblade. Yes. He will retain. He will still be champion. It's just, it just makes sense. He just became champion. He's going to show the world like he is the best there is. He truly is the catalyst. He truly is the reason why all of this is happening. I am such a fan of this dude. After this matchup, I want to follow Jay White, see what he's doing in New Japan, mm. see what he's doing in every company. He's, he's an impact at times. I hope he comes back to AEW at times. He's one of the hardest working wrestlers right now in the business. Yes. I say, hey, man, go on a world tour, collect championships, do what <laughs> Kenny Omega was, was trying to do. Was supposed do to do. Better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, Jay White, the motherfucking switchblade. Let's go. Mm, mm. Man, I'm so impressed with Jay White. He has that swagger. Like you could tell, like, oh, this dude is a boss. He calls the shots. And and his delivery, his cadence, it's like, I don't give a fuck who you are, bro. I am the motherfucking switchblade at the end of the day, bro. All right. This match is 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 for him. He has wins in every every single competitor. He just beat Okada. He just beat Okada. 
just a few weeks ago. It just this is easy. This is easy money for Jay White, bro. <laughs> right. The way he's punking Adam Cole, you know, last week was hilarious. You know, <laughs> not for you, Adam. Right. He beat you twice. <laughs> oh my God, man. Even last week when <laughs> when Jay White came out there with Adam Page, he was like, I'm not I'm not gonna challenge you. You're not gonna come and challenge me for for the championship. And Adam Cole was like, Yeah, that's right. You tell him. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's gonna be un- all elite undisputed bullet club. <laughs> like, hmm? Huh? We? <laughs> we? <laughs> it's we. It's all this we talk. Adam, Adam. <laughs> it's not gonna be you. Sorry, brother. <laughs> Sorry. It's not gonna be you either. <laughs> Adam Cole's face too. He was so defeated. Oh, dude. What? He had a what? salty look. He, he said, had Jay, a salty Jay, wait. Jay. And it was crazy. Let's talk about this. Let's <laughs> talk about this. Jay walked up the ramp and didn't even look at him. <laughs> he kept going, bro. You are not my concern, bro. You are not my concern. Jay. 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 <laughs> He's trying to get his attention. Jay. This man would just I'm like, bro, this is this is how you getting punk, man. This is dude. I feel like when you was in NXT and you punk like what? Like, you punk cross. Oh. oh dude, that was it was just yeah. not fair. I felt like it, it, that's how he that Jay White is doing to Adam Cole, man. Yeah. So I'm loving this, you know, uh D- Jay White. It's it is decided it's for go. both of us, Clark Street. <laughs> we we behind you, shot yes, time. Let's go, we are, man. Motherfucking switchblade. Let's go. Mm. Oh man. All right, we have covered all of the matches, but one. It oh, hold is... on, hold on. We didn't. Did we talk about the pre-show? Oh, we didn't talk about the pre-show. You, yeah. uh, which I don't have that on my uh, list. Do you? You have? Yep, that I up? do. I do. Okay, go ahead and read that off. All right, it is going to be a eight-man tag team match between Matt Caster and the Ass Boys. <laughs> <laughs> First, this is the DKC and Kevin Knight. Who is that? Hold on, let me hover over. I can play who played as a defender. Okay, I know, I know none of these dudes. And oh man, okay. Yuya. Yamara. Okay. Uh, I think I pronounced that right. And then you got the ass boys, Austin Gunn, <laughs> Colton Gunn, <laughs> Billy, Billy Gunn, and Max Caster. Yeah. <laughs> Scissor me, daddy! <laughs> Anthony Bowles going Dan wild. Housen, man, has forever changed that team, dude. Yes. Is, oh thank, my you need to thank him. Ass boys. <laughs> Yes, boys. <laughs> like, what? At the athlete? Really <laughs> Looking at the shirts. I like yours better. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> Ass boys. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, all right. With that one, <laughs> I- I'm just going to go. Oh, this is a flip of a coin. I don't know. Yeah, it's a flip of a coin. <laughs> I'm going to go with... Um, uh, Max Caster and the Ass Boys. Yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. <laughs> like at this point, it's just um, it, it should be a fun match for the buy-in. We'll see. And like so I'm I'm gonna get introduced to some to some wrestlers that I really don't know. But um, for a prediction, I'm just gonna stick with uh, the AEW side of it and say Caster and the Ass Boys. Same here, man. They <laughs> Max Caster and the Ass Boys. They've been one of the most entertaining acts for me. Every time they go out there, it's just a whole entertaining <coughs> stick. Just got Max Caster saying his bars. And you got Austin Gunn and Colton Gunn always getting the city wrong. <laughs> you got Anthony Bourne snatching the mic away. <laughs> the fuck you talking about? <laughs> San Antonio! <laughs> the acclaim has arrived! Scissor me, daddy! <laughs> right, you got Billy Gunn shaking too. Right. <laughs> it's great. 
The whole yes. thing is great. It's just pure <laughs> insane. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. So that. So and that's the only pre pre. That is the only pre show. Okay. Nope. Nope. No women's match. Just that. Wow. Okay. So we just got. We're back to one. Even on on pay per views now. Pay per views. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. All right. It's not part of the quarterly business plan. So. Oh, that's true. This is extra. This is this is. I'm, t- I'm telling you, this is just a dynamite. This essentially is a dynamite with more championships on the line. That's what this is. You were spot on. I didn't disagree with that assessment, sir. Yep. That's that's what it definitely yep. this is what it is, man. Just extended Ooh. special episode of AEW Dynamite. The Forbidden Door. Forbidden Door edition. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Well, in the main event of said show, <laughs> we have got the interim. Pretend fake, uh, not actually <laughs> AEW championship match. Mr. Rogers neighborhood make believe world. <laughs> I just don't understand it, man. Just strip CM Punk of the championship and make this person the champion. Like, why has he got to be interim? Like, okay, Tony's a fan, just... he's a fan first before business owner. He's shown you this before, he's not a business owner first, yeah, he's a fan first, yeah. I mean, it, it's just, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. But, you know, we're going to have the match. It should be uh, definitely a, a fun match for sure, seeing yeah. these two guys yeah. go at it. And there is a story going on with this one because John Moxley, I mean, he detailed it. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, been he chasing. Did. He did. Well, let me say, the match is John Moxley versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. And Moxley has been chasing, chasing Tanahashi for years. For years he's been trying to wrestle this man. And finally it's happening. It's it's interesting the way it's happening because initially this match was supposed to be CM Punk versus Tanahashi, yeah. but CM Punk pulled out because of the injury, and then John Moxley won this this well he was at the end of the tournament uh, yeah. that was to crown whoever was going to go against. They used the rankings uh, for his like all right you just need to fight the the winner of the tournament and then yeah right it, it was weird the whole thing was <laughs> was weird why not just take one and two you know whoever's the number one contender number two contender have there them fight go. and then there you go <laughs> the rankings matter Hafiz. <laughs> the rankings okay they are important uh, they matter yeah. just <laughs> circle debate <laughs> it's gonna be fun when we get together <laughs> This I'm bringing up. Uh, <laughs> this this example right, right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> oh man. All right. So, like I said, Moxley has been wanting this match for years. It's finally happening. Um, there are some stakes here, and whoever wins this goes against CM Punk whenever he comes back, essentially, is what's going to happen here. So we're either going to get CM Punk versus John Moxley or CM Punk versus Tanahashi, which was the match that this was supposed to be. So with that said, um, I'm going to go first on this one. This is – it's tough because now I'm trying to think from a booking standpoint, is Tony going to say, well, CM Punk really wanted to have that match with Tanahashi – so I'm going to give him that match when Tanahashi, when he's ready to come back. Uh, do we look at it that way? Or do we just say, well, the time has passed. The moment has passed. Let's just go with what's best for AEW. And that would be to have John Moxley be the champion until CM Punk is healthy. And then have those two fight it out. And then CM Punk wins it back then. Do we do something like that? So I'm trying to pick Tony's brain here just to figure out like where his head is at. Because if it's me... I'm just going to go with, hey, I can't have my champion not be in the company. Like, to have, you know, Tanahashi take the AEW championship to New yeah. Japan and not be, you know, in AEW, and who knows when CM Punk is coming back. They said That's it's not going to be too long, but we don't know the actual timeline. Yeah. So if Tanahashi is going to be champion away, like, that's huge. That That's like, I don't know. It, it's it's I don't think that works in, in AEW. So... You know, I would go with John Moxley, but this is Tony Khan, so who knows what this man is thinking. Um, I'm going to go with Moxley. I'm going to go with Moxley getting the win that, you know, he's wanted. He said, hey, when I beat you, you're going to call me ace. I think that's the more important part of all of this. Damn the championship. It's not really about that. 
It's about John Moxley and him earning that respect from Tanahashi. That's really what this match is about. And that's the part that I'm going to use to kind of get me even more invested in this matchup is to say, I want to see how far Moxley is willing to go to get this win. That means so much to him. So for that reason, I'm going to say it's going to be John Moxley um, being the victor and then eventually going on to fight for the real championship. The real championship. Yes, yes, well said. I don't disagree with that at all. I'm going to go with Mox as well because you need to have your champion in the company. You're a pretend champion, you know. <laughs> you need to have your fabricated the, champion. Yeah, the duplicate belt will be there. <laughs> belt. Copy and paste. Copy the one in the AW store, AW shop. Right. Replica, replica pay that title, seven yeah. bills. Fox right. Hold the replica title for a couple months until he can get his hands on the real, <laughs> real thing. They should make it like out of paper for real. They should just say, hey, here's, here's the championship. We drew the championship on a piece of paper. Hold this up so we know this one isn't real. It's just a playholder. Play for champion. Get it? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. We're having too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's a good point that Mox and Tanahashi are telling a good story. It has long term story yeah. to tell at that. And uh, thanks to John Moxley for telling that for me, uh, yep. who I actually forgot about that history, you know for when it started, when he was in New Japan, left WWE, called him out then. It was supposed to be this match, and then all hell broke loose. And the world, mm-hmm. world decided to shut down on us. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, even tonight, you know, chaos just broke down towards the end of that match, but these two were just focused in. You know, yeah. It was like Goku and Vegeta. I don't give a fuck about it. No one else. <laughs> Nothing else exists. But you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We're going to have this fight. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. We're going to duke it out. And I, I respect that storytelling as well, man. And, and, you know, to John Moxley's point, you know, he is a strong storyteller from an in-ring standpoint as well, too. So I like that. So it's going to be a fun match. Uh, shout out to Tanahashi. His hair always looks glorious, you know, very full and vibrant. Like, man, he's just a... Uh, you know, he's super saiyan. You know, the hair is just glowing, bro. <laughs> just has this energy, this aura. He's a rock see. star, man. Yes, yes. Uh, so he's a rock star. <laughs> yeah, he definitely stands out, man. So I appreciate that. But it's going to be fun. Got Mox, pretend champion. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This has been a fun breakdown. So I guess the question now, Devin, is, after yes. having broke these matches down, yes, are you now entertained enough, excited enough, amped up enough to pay the fifty bucks? I'm gonna pay fifteen dollars at the <laughs> AMC, fifteen minutes away from me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair I'm gonna enough. save thirty five dollars, thirty five dollars savings. Bucks. I like that in my pocket right now. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But then, just in general, are you excited for the show now? Are you you feeling like okay, I'm 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 ready for it? You know, we broke. I'm a little. I'll say this: I'm I'm a little bit more excited. I came into the show, yeah. You know, because even Dynamite, it was some stories that's still lacking. We're just doing matches, but as we broke it down, as we we're trying to find stories, doing what ifs between the women's <laughs> women's match as well, that got me even amped up to see. All right, yeah. after this match, maybe we'll have. A, a feud between these two ladies, right? A proper, a proper feud, as Story will say. You know, you know. Let me get that redo. So, yeah, I want, I want, I want to see more stories between the women. Uh, it sucks though. It's just one match. It's just one women's match. Yeah, but this very male-dominated Forbidden Door card. It sucks. I'm yep. gonna put it out there. Nine right? matches. Yeah, ten if you're including the ten pre-show. if you count the pre show the the buy-in. Yep, the buy-in. The bite. Yeah. 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 But uh I say I started as a three, maybe a four excitement level, about a six, six and a half at, at best. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard for me to put a number on it. I mean, six, six and a half. I I'll I'll go a little higher. I'll say I'm probably at like a seven and a half, almost seven. eight as far as excitement. Now yeah. having talked to you about it, having broken it down, 
Like we had a lot of fun on the show. And so now I'm like, okay, I've got some energy, yeah. I got some juice around it. So it, this this conversation got me there to a point where I like, okay, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, you know, I'm gonna look at options. I might, you know, pull the trigger and pay the 50 this time, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll mm, see. Bro. It's still not take my money. It's like it's it's a it's a business decision. <laughs> it's a business decision that I got to make. Yeah, <laughs> executive I may have business to see decision. Alternative means to see it, right? But you like, know, you gonna eat that fifty? I think that the the two uh, fatal four way matches, um, both the IWGP Championship match and yeah. the ACC Championship match, as it is going to be dubbed <laughs> going forward, <laughs> right? The ACC Championship. <laughs> Those two <laughs> matches almost by themselves, I have enough excitement around that to where it's like, okay, you, it's, it's, I'm almost there. I'm almost there where it's like, yeah, I, I, I just can't wait to see those matches. Even though I'm, I'm, especially with the IWGP match, I'm pretty clear on who's going to win there. Yeah. Um, just to see all of them in the ring together and just how they're going to perform together. Like, I really want to see that. So I think yeah. my expectations for the forbidden door, I want, to see who can build some momentum and who can come out and keep it going into AEW Dynamite or even New Japan as well. Yep. Spe- uh, you know, especially, you know, Jay Switchblade, motherfucker Switchblade. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See if he's going to show up and, you know, well, not show up, but me, you know, if he, you know, when he shows up at New Japan, me, I right, let me pay attention to him a little bit more, see what he's doing with that get me we don't know we're gonna see we're gonna find out yeah yeah i i'm i'm a fan i'm a fan i just hope it just makes me even more of a fan you know of of the motherfucking switchblade because that dude <laughs> he's real you know yeah. and then he's he's he got, got that new zealand you know accent you're know, going on he's from Auckland. he's just like you know just the whole swagger there too i'm like oh man like listening to him just 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 bars you know dropping just Facts on people. Like Did you hear the promo he saying. kicked off after he beat Okada? No, I didn't. I didn't. I got to check that out. Bro, this motherfucker was like, man, hey, it wouldn't be no AEW if it wasn't for me. He was saying, like, he's, like, he's the AEW catalyst, man. Because of me. I was like, damn, he had, man, he had a tribal chief Roman Reigns moment, bro. <laughs> when he just went off, off everybody dude, saying, I'm man. Mr. WrestleMania. Like, he had yeah. one of those bars, bro. I'm yes. Like, dude. It was great seeing him uh, in Impact, you know, addressing the the uh, talking about Bullet Club yeah. and like with Luke Gallows and and Anderson, you know, at the time they were against each other, and he's like, you know, you guys aren't good enough. Like he just mm-hmm. let them know, like you're not on our level. We've we've upgraded since you guys left, you know, like and just that whole interaction. I'm watching him. I'm I'm going, man, this dude on the mic, like. It's just, it's great. It's just great listening to him just have that swagger, that confidence, yeah. you know, and, and and just tearing into his opponents, you know, verbally, you know, and then you see him in the ring and it's like, shit, he can back it up. He can back it like, up too. This dude is real. He's about that action. He's <laughs> yeah. about that action. He lets you he know is. up front. He, he's not with the bullshit. Mm-hmm. Gotta play games. It's like, Adam Cole, you ain't getting this, bro. Because real talk. <laughs> I beat this dude two times, and you lost to this dude two times. Let me know what that makes sense in the math for me. What the fuck I'm going to give you a goddamn championship match? Get the fuck up out my face, bro. <laughs> I can't say no. I'm like, he's right. Yeah, yeah I said right. I was like, well, sorry. I, I can't disagree with that, bro. That's some, that is some simple logic, some very simple math for me to understand. Like, oh, he got, he got two wins over Paige? Can't say shit. <laughs> you lost the page two times. Just, like one, two. Yeah, he, he beat me twice. <laughs> and then he beat him twice. And he would have got us. What the fuck are any of us saying? <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> Let me build my wins up. Let me go to dark. <laughs> yep. I'm working on that. Because oh, the rankings man. matter. Yeah, the rankings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So. That's going to do it for the AEW Forbidden Door Prediction Show. Before we go, as always, though, Devin, it's that yes. time. Please tell the people mm. where they can 
catches. Yes, yes, all the time. I'm going to go down a little small list of social medias that you can follow us on the All Stop and Shop website. But let me go down the list first. You got TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Yes, yes, Twitter, Instagram. Shout out to our motherfucking Facebook group, Pop Street Wrestling Community. All right, I'm going to shout them out every time episode because they be coming through. Having some great posts. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to Pepsi Phil, who yep. just hate the idea that Elias and Ezekiel are actually different people. I'm like, bro, just admit it. They're different. Accept Not the it. same. Accept, Accept it. it. Yes. <laughs> you had the evidence on Monday Night Raw. Loved it, by the way. Knocked that out of the fucking park with that, bro. They did so <laughs> with that. Oh, oh, my God. Elias being there the beard full yes i'm like oh kevin's gonna be so mad about <laughs> he did he was like oh nope nope i'm stopping right there we're not doing this <laughs> now no <laughs> Like, like, I know, movie map, I've seen movie map, I've seen the dinosaur <laughs> fly a helicopter. I know they can do this. <laughs> we'll destroy with you on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you could have pre-recorded Ezekiel. <laughs> I was like, dude. I was like, oh my God. And then at the end, when he went back and they were interviewing him, and then yes. Zeke comes around the corner. Yeah. I heard you out there, Kevin. <laughs> and I accept your challenge. <laughs> and he's just like, what? What? Wait, <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, what? How? <laughs> it was uh, perfect. It was. was. Bravo. Yes. Bravo on that. Holy Dude. shit. Wow. One of the best stories on Monday Night Raw. Yes. yes. Unbelievably. Shout yes. out to KO. Shout out to Elias. Shout out to Ezekiel. Now there's another brother named Eli. Or Elrod. 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 Yeah. Elrod. Oh, please. I'm Make like, I want to I wanna see Elrod. See Elrod. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> Kevin Owens is going to lose his mind. Oh, let's keep this going. Oh, storytelling. Story yeah. Telling. Yeah, yeah, but like I said, shout out to Pepsi Phil, Park Street Wrestling Community. I'm gonna shout out another group, shout out to Top Row Wrestling Talk, yeah, Top yes. Row Wrestling Talk Facebook group, too. We kind of tree branch from them because we didn't have no group, we didn't have no Facebook group, yeah. we got a Facebook page, yeah. But they invited us, you know, since we're you know family now, went over there, kind of like, all right, cool, cool. Oh, I like it, like this, I like this vibe, you know what. Let's see, you know, do our own page too. So you want to come with us? They came with us too. They're the, they're the founders of the yeah. uh, Clark Street Wrestling community too. So shout out to Bruce. Shout out to Grandma Wendy. Shout out to South Philly Psycho Dom. Brother yeah. from another mother. All right. Nigerian, Nigerian Psychos. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Wendy. Because she said like, we're like the, we're like, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 we're like uh, the ass boys in, uh, what, what's the name? The acclaim. <laughs> she did like the scissors. Oh <laughs> I was my like, God. that's perfect. <laughs> that is perfect description of our groups right there. It is decided. <laughs> the scissors. Yes. We intertwine a lot between each other with these groups. <laughs> Cousin. Shout out to Wendy. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yes. Yes, yeah, so shout out to Top of Wrestling Talk. Yeah. All right. And you can always see the audio per, uh, portion of our podcast or the video. And now we're on Spotify. Shout out to Spotify. You can see us. Like, yeah. Video yeah. on Spotify, yes. Yeah, I know. Weird things, you know? Mm-hmm. Evolution. But yes, video, YouTube as well on ClarkStreetWrestling.com. ST for the abbreviation. And of course, like we got our lovely merch. Get your lovely t shirt tank. Damn merch. Yes. Cause it's hot right now. Going still going through a minor heat wave. You know, I don't know what's up with the the uh, the forecaster. He said 82. I'm like, cool. Got it to 90. I'm like, shit. Yeah. Uh, the day before it was like 109. It was, it was hot. Like crazy like that. It was fucking hot. <laughs> it I like heat. I don't I, know. I'd rather be cold than hot, man. Yes. Just, I don't I mean, like when, like super cold. I don't like the extreme weather either way. You yeah, know, but if yeah. I have to pick, I don't like snow. Yeah, I don't like snow. Uh, I don't like ice. You know, like, like ice slipping around and shit. Nah, nah, nah. yes. I, you know, fall and spring. Yes, just, perfect. That is me. Oh, yep, perfect yeah. weather. Like <laughs> Indian summer, 60s, 70s. 
you know, 75. Yeah. That's why I stop it. Like there we go. Perfect temperature for me. Not yes. too hot. Not too cold. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But like I said, get your motherfucking beach towel. Clark Street beach Wrestling. Yes, get your ass off that hot ass sand. Let me mention that. Get your mm-hmm. ass off that hot ass sand, especially during this heat wave. You're going to burn yourself. It's not a good Ooh. look. No. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But protect your ass with the Clark Street Wrestling beach towel. <laughs> On the website, we got a store, clockstreetwrestling.com forward slash store. Oh, yo, pleasure. It is decided. Yes, <laughs> yes. We had a lot of fun on this show. Let me we tell did. you. <laughs> With that said, that is going to do it for this episode. This prediction show for AEW's Forbidden Door, AEW versus New Japan. Should be a lot of fun. Can't Ooh. wait to see it coming up this Sunday on pay-per-view or at your local theater. Check it out. Get a little discount, $15 instead of $50. Sounds like a good deal to me. Check it out. Definitely, it's going to be a good time. But with all that said, that's going to do it. So for Devin, I'm a feast. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to the Clark Street Wrestling Podcast. Yes, yeah, save that money. All right, save your money. $35 <laughs> in savings, okay? Going to save your gas money. In- inflation is a bitch right now. You got yeah. milk that went up. You got eggs that went up. Every- the shit is real. Save your money. You want to pay the 50 That's on you. You're going to have to eat that. Circle of the bait. <laughs> no, I didn't forget. I'm just going down the list because inflation. A circle of debate. Y'all gonna get this work? Y'all gonna get this L? Uh, we're gonna, gonna talk about these in this episode. We're gonna talk about these rankings. We're gonna talk about the women's matches. Oh no. It's gonna be a good one circle of debate. It's Y'all gonna be a very one-sided ready. debate. Ooh. <laughs> slaughter. <laughs> Flawless victory. The slaughterhouse. Welcome to the slaughterhouse. Yes. It's going to be Remember Titans. It will be perfect in every way. <laughs> <laughs>